Any questions or comments about any of those pros? Anything you want to add that you think is uh, wonderful about being an advocate? Okay, let's go to the um, cons. Okay, um, now you've got kind of the opposite here, child dependency on a consular versus the family. If you've developed that relationship, then that child may be you know, very much depending on you, believing what you say, and of course I think you all have experienced, gee, what do I tell this child or not tell this child? So that's very important, but you know, this uh, dependency is very important and wonderful, but you've also uh, got to remember there's caregivers out there and everybody involved in the case so uh, be careful of your the child dependency there yeah the thing is that it's kind of a fine line to transfer that dependency to the family if it's a new adoptive family or whatever so there's there's some real boundary things that you have to do and you certainly don't want the child to feel like they're abandoned uh, but it becomes really important that you are not going to be in their life forever. You are not going to solve their problems forever. So there's a transition period there where you need to transfer that over. And if they call you for something, maybe say, you know, have you asked your mom? Have you asked your dad? You know, um, make it an easy transition. But it, it can become very difficult for long-term cases where you've been on the case for an extended period of time. Agree. Working within the system, and we're not here to beat CPS to death by any means. And again, I promised Janet I'd be positive. Um, but uh, again, but honestly, I've done this seven and a half years, and I've got a new case, and I have the first caseworker with CPS that uh, is she's just wonderful. Uh, she's communicative and she's just wonderful and I, I'm sorry but that's the first one in all my cases and all this time that I've had that uh, you know uh, what's her name? Is, is positive. Pardon? <laughs> <Yeah>. What's her <laughs> name? <laughs> Katie Tackett. Katie. Katie Tackett. Oh and, Katie. She's awesome. Yeah. Anyway awesome. now but you have to learn how to work within that system. It's not just CPS. Uh, Sharon's laid out the court system very well for you. And I'm telling you, uh, again, I'm pretty brash, and I, the first time I got cut off in court, I left with my tail ducked, big time. I was, I was mad and hurt. So you've got to learn how to do that. You've got to learn how to, and we're gonna go into some hospitals soon. How do I work around an RTC, a residential treatment center? And that is a little bit different than a therapeutic or psychiatric hospital, etc. You've got to know how to do that. Uh, I don't know if any of you go into prison, but you you got to know how to go into a prison, or otherwise you're not going to get in if you do any ministry in there. And it's the same way. So working within the system is extremely important. And you've got to learn that and learn how to get things done so you can be the voice for the child. I have a funny story. I have to interject this story. This is the funniest thing that ever happened to me in my life. I was representing criminal defendants on appeal. So I did a lot of appellate work, which meant I had to go to the prisons. And the prisons were all two, three hours away. Okay, so I load up my car on Saturday and I get up to the prison. You have to know that visitation day is for everybody. So the families and the kids and everybody are in this huge big room. So they process everybody at the same time. You're going through this long line and you have to go through the metal detector. Mm -hmm. So everybody's going through and they're blipping and they're blipping and I, they get to me and I can't pass. So I say, okay. So they say, okay, start taking things off. So you take off your shoes and you take off your belts and you take off anything that you think could possibly set off the alarm and I couldn't, I couldn't pass. And so they said, well, you can't go. And I said, listen, I drove two and a half hours to get here. I am going in to see him. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, you're going to have to be wanted. 
I said, what? You have to go in that room with that, that sheriff over there, and she's going to wand you, and she's going to pat you down. The room was hysterical. All these families, all these kids and everything, and they knew I was a lawyer, and I couldn't get through. Sure enough, it was the underwire on my girl. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Couldn't get in. Couldn't get in. They thought it was hysterical. My wife does prison ministry, and uh, she and her colleagues go into a woman's prison, and they all have special bras for that. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I never did that again, let me tell you. Never. Okay, uh, again, caregiver dependencies. Uh, and I had a gentleman one time that he wasn't particularly well to do, and uh, in the, towards the end, he started hitting me up for money and various things, uh, not only for himself, but also for the child that had been put in his custody. So uh, you can get that on you know, the caregiver wanting to depend on yourself. Come on in. Hello. <laughs> anyway, so I, you want to say anything else about that? Yeah, I, I had a similar situation. I had a, a case in Harris County, and it was uh, it was dastardly. It was dastardly from the get-go. Um, it was a family situation where Grandma had taken care of the kids, and then Mom had taken care of the kids, and they had all passed away. And the aunt, who was only 28 years old, she had six kids of her own, and she took in seven kids. So we had a, you know, we had a big family situation, and we ended up we ended up finding. Um, a new place to live because after the department said they could stay there, we got a new supervisor, we went nose to nose with her, they ended up pulling all of the kids at one time, we ended up spending the night in the department's offices to go to court the next day and the attorney ad litem got the kids back. Um, but we had to go and we had to find an apartment, we had to get money. It got to the point where she could not go to the social security office. Mom had used the kids' money and then had used their social security numbers for apartments and everything. So we had all those issues and we ended up hand in hand for two years. She couldn't go to the offices and get anything, but if I showed up with her, it worked. So we um, ended up working and working together. and. It was like a year after, we, we still stay in contact. She called me and said, I lost my job, can you give me any money? So there was still some dependency, but she had worked through. Um, the caseworker had messed up the case, and so they had not done the license for her to get the kids for PMC and get money. So when the case ended, she got no money for the kids. So we had to get Social Security. I mean, it was just a long drug out involved situation. But being side by side with her, she stayed in touch with me and then asked about money and I said, no, I, I just can't. But I did give her resources so that she could get funding and she could do on her own. But um, yeah, it, there's a, a boundaries thing. You know, you, you get to the point where you don't want to be the end and be all because they have to be out there on their own functioning. You know, it's like when you raise a kid. You know, at some point you gotta cut the strings, you know, so interesting cases associated with that how many of you have had a caregiver say I can't get CPS to communicate <laughs> okay? uh, now cautious there because they want you if you're communicating with them regularly they want you to tell them everything that's going on etc and it becomes a form of dependency and again you've got to be very very careful what you tell them uh, as you know some things you can tell a caregiver and some things sometimes you can't so and it depends on the type of caregiver also uh, so you've got to be very careful because once they find out you're a communicative CASA they are going to test you and I've certainly had that happen to me more than once. So I'll tell you what I did. I have a case right now where every time the caseworker went out there, she would tell them something, mm -hmm. and then they would call and ask me what that meant. So I started scheduling my visits at the same time as hers so that I could go and I could listen to what she told them, 
and then clarify it right then and there so there wasn't any confusion. Mm -hmm. So we go to visits together and I just kind of listen and then you're not caught off guard because you can't answer for what you haven't heard. And it puts you in a really precarious situation. So. All right. Um, the last bullet, if you disagree with any other professionals, can you work with them effectively again? goes back to working within the system, okay? And it doesn't matter whether you like that caseworker, that attorney at litem, uh, it, it really doesn't matter. You've got to work with them, and you know that. But uh, uh, it, it's hard sometimes to deal with these people that are so difficult to work with. They don't communicate, they don't help out, they don't help the family, the caregivers, and that's their job as a caseworker or even an attorney at litem. I, I was at a children's visit one time uh, down in Conroe and we're, uh, the attorney and I are there looking through the glass and everything and she starts talking about Tom, Dick, and Harry, and I said, sorry, that's Jane, Tom, and, you know, Sherry. She didn't even know who the children were. She had the wrong case. So, uh, you just, you, you just got to be real careful. So, all right, those are just some of the cons we came up with. Uh, anybody else uh, run into obstacles or something you want to talk about? Any suggestions? Oh. It's, I know that I, well, I know, I don't know. I assume nothing's changed. <laughs> it's, it's difficult to, to have time with your, your child alone when you have to stay in the house, you know, with the, with the fosters. And uh, so we started like going out, like you were saying, you couldn't get the kid to connect with you, the abuse and all that. We found that when we met uh, our little guy at lunch at school, and we would always go by and pick up something special mm -hmm. for him. Sure. Uh, he would get so excited about that, then he'd start blabbing off. And that's when, if you listen very carefully, you hear something that's maybe not exactly right or not exactly the way you thought about it. Because it's difficult when you can't take those kids one-on-one -on -one out of the environment and, and and get their uh, their trust built up and stuff. I usually try every other month to go to the school. Yeah. Oh yeah, we did. Well, our child was on the other side of Egypt, so, it's not so <laughs> we always went to the school to avoid the traffic going through. Egypt. Sure, sure. I think that's a great suggestion. Um, it is. It's difficult to get some private time with the kids. Yeah. And in a kind of relaxed atmosphere, it's really good. Are we still um, to go to? I. <laughs> I used to be a, a guardian ad litem before I worked for the court when I was an attorney and I had a case and we were allowed to transport our kids. So um, we were all attorneys and we were allowed to transport and I had two little girls, one was five and one was six. And we had been trying earnestly to find out if mom's allegations that dad was following her were true. And we're driving down the road and there's a picture on a billboard of a camera and the little six year old said, oh, that's a camera just like my daddy has. I said, it is. And she said, yeah. We go out at dark and we follow mommy and we take pictures. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. out of the mouths of babes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, as you know, we can currently go see kiddos uh, depending on the circumstances. And, you know, uh, Kim's giving you guidelines. My point being, uh, my wife and I just went to see a child and she is housed with an aunt in a two-bedroom apartment. There's seven human beings in that apartment. It's wall-to-wall -wall beds. And we had already decided this is what we're going to do. We took lawn chairs, mask and everything, found a shade tree, and had a visit under the shade tree. And it actually turned out to be a, a very good visit, if you will. Much, much better if we had tried to stay in that house with four little bitty ones. Uh, her defiant brother uh, over here going yang 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 yang. So anyway, uh, you you can you can make it very good. So uh, again, any other comments? This is a good break time for next. It's a little bit lengthy. Perfect. Thank you all.
Okay, so we are going to break oh. for about 